You ever notice that a slim chance and a fat chance are the same thing? Yes, that was amazing. That was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. How are you, Dev? I'm doing wonderful. I'm inside and I'm healthy. I'm safe. Thank God. Amazing. So I'm doing good. Well, let's talk, talk a little bit about um, our, some of our body paint projects together. Uh, what I would love to. Your, <laughs> what's been your favorite painting that we've done? Well, we've done a few. I had a lot of fun. The most recent one we did was the Andy of Warhol banana one where we got to dance around and be really, really, really screwy. I like being a screwball. It helps when you're covered in body paint. Um, but I think my favorite one still is the very first one we did because they ended up being like 16 people all gathered around on one circle on the floor trying to figure out how to create this pattern. And there was such a wonderful camaraderie. We're all completely naked. And, uh, and it's, it, there was such a bond instantly because we all have one goal. There's no preconceptions. There's no prejudgments. There's no nothing. You're meeting people the way they are. You, all you know is their name. Some of them, I don't remember their names. <laughs> Just to have that common goal and nothing exists outside this one studio. You're all painted bright yellow. And you're like, let's figure out how to make this image come to life. And it was just, it was, all the projects are wonderful. I have a lot of fun, but the fact that there were just so many people involved in one small space was really, really invigorating. So we recently did the bananas dance video, which was really fun. Kara and Lana did like the cool choreography for that. At the YouTube space. At YouTube. Yep, we did that at YouTube. And then we did the exhibition at the Getty, which was really... Uh, yes, that was amazing. Yeah, sure. That was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. Um, which one? The, uh, well, the one where I was lying down on the ground. Yeah. Because it was just so cold. And to be able to have to lie... You know, one of the reasons I, a lot of the paint models out there are acrobats and contortionists and all kinds of amazing movement masters. I'm not. Okay. Um, but I have a background in art as an artist, and I've been figure modeling for years. So I'm really good at standing still to try and stand, to try and not move and stay perfectly still when your body and your, every muscle in your body is contracting constantly because you're just shivering from the cold we didn't expect it to get that cold um but to stay there for i don't know how it was a 40 minutes or an hour at a time or i'm not sure it felt like an eternity yeah but then you had to slide back down on that on that floor and the child and you're like oh my god um but the same right the day before i got to stand up and and i'm sure a lot of models have talked about the interaction between the normal people out there and when they see a model who's painted camouflage into the scenery behind them and just the reactions they get, the, the wonder, it's almost like watching a uh, magician at work, you know, <laughs> where they walk by, they don't even see you at first. And then they, they do this like, and they go get their husband and a wife. They're like, that's, that's a real person. It's incredible. <laughs> it really is. It's a lot of fun to be part of that. Yeah. I love disrupting, you know, um, yeah. expectations. I think it's great. Uh, because people are just programmed, right, to just continue their day and habitually. And I love the disruption because it maybe mm -hmm. can disrupt other patterns, um, which is great. What does it feel like to get body painted? People always ask this. Always, always, always. Yeah, you're right. I've been asked that before. Um, it feels great. And when someone is so much closer there's a very personal experience between you and an artist mm -hmm. and i've had the opportunity to work with a bunch of artists and no matter who it is when you're working with them there's there's a beautiful i don't want to say romance because it's not romantic but it's poetic mm -hmm. there's something about that release that energy that's shared when someone is 
when you are the canvas, you, you guys, there's a symbiosis that's just amazing to feel. And you start to forget that you're not wearing anything. You know, you start to really become involved in the painting. You see a lot of models be like, oh, what if I do this? What if I do this? What about, and they start to be inspired as well. And yeah. just to watch that evolution happen is amazing. So it feels involved. It feels enlightening. It, it feels carefree. As funny as that sounds, so most people would think, oh my God, it's the exact opposite of that when you're standing there or someone who's staring at your body in every flaw. But the human body in every single shape is amazing. Mm -hmm. And to use it as a canvas is such an incredible experience. And what is your Twitter where people can go read all your- Oh, this is, uh, oh, my name is Dove, like the bird, D-O-V-E. And the hashtag is a Dove tweets. Because I don't put them on often, but whenever I have it, I just share it. It's mostly for my own, because most the, mostly I'm the only one laughing. And when I'm on a road trip with someone and I just want to giggle, <laughs> just bring it up, just scroll through. So my Twitter's at Dove Mayer, M-E-I-R. And you're welcome to go check out some, they're really funny. I love it. Um, and you're in Burbank. Um, uh, is, is the production, uh, you're, who's across from you, Disney? I'm near the Disney Studios, yeah. Is that totally shut down right now too? Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, everything is shut down. For the most part, people are always working from homes. Um, in this industry, um, you have casting directors who are using this time to reach out to find new talent and sure. everyone's doing what they can to stay busy. But mm -hmm. uh, as far as production, I was recently booked a role in a series and they basically said, we're gonna have you, we don't know when, but when it happens, it happens. So people are just waiting. Yeah, I've been having a lot of that myself, uh, where it's like, hey, I can't wait to work on this project with you, and we're all ready to go, and we were ready to go, and, but, you know, now right. we have to wait, and so we'll see. <laughs> a whole lot of that, of that happening. <laughs> yeah, but thankfully, I do, I, I'm in my voiceover booth right now, and I that's still moving strong, thankfully. Um, everyone who does voiceover now is pushing real hard, and more and more um, voiceover artists are setting up their studios like mine to have industry quality sound so they can not only audition to book the work, but actually record the job in their house instead of going yeah. to the sound studio, which they can't do now. That's super so. cool. So what does your setup look like? How do you set up a, a voice? Um, well, this is actually a built out, there's a window for the engineer. It's a, it's a, it's a these are, what you see behind me are actually deflectors. They deflect the sound off to mm -hmm. absorb the sound. Um, so this whole room, it's a building on my property that is built out to be a studio. So we had musicians come here, friends who do it, and we, we do a podcast. We, we've had uh, 10 people at one time around a table here doing a podcast reading, a table reading of uh, movie screenplays. That's awesome. So, yeah, it's a lot of fun. That's cool. So what else have you been doing to keep busy besides doing some voiceover work and casting? Which is awesome. Well, I have a three-year-old daughter. She keeps me very busy. I bet. Um, I teach uh, financial seminars. I have a background in finance. So I teach financial seminars for free uh, every year to people to teach them basics about budgeting and investing and debt and what have you, because there's a lot of concepts that they never teach you in school. And um, I took all the questions. It's neat, it is neat. And there are a lot of questions people ask that aren't in any books because the books usually go right over their head. They don't realize that most people don't actually know what a stock is, like what actually is a stock. So I took all this information that I was learning and I started writing a book. And uh, I finished it recently because I have a lot of time and I already have a publishing house who's That's sending over cool. yeah. a, a proposal. So, you know, Wait. moving along. I said, that's amazing, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Uh, are you me. buying a bunch of stock right now? I'm not yet. Mm -hmm. um, I am waiting. I don't think it's gone as low as it can go. <laughs> But it is a good time if you have the money. Obviously, people are very strapped. Um, there are some people who, like me, who set aside money to put in their IRAs and it's sitting in the money market account, but you haven't actually bought stock with it because you're too lazy to get on there and buy. So it's kind of just sitting there. And now I'm like, oh, thank God I waited. So a lot of people have the money in the money market account. You can't touch it till you're 70 years old, anyway, 69 and a half anyway. So, or 59 and a half. So they might as well just buy some stock because I can't do anything with it. So I'm just waiting till I feel like it's gonna be on the uptrend. And then yeah, things are at a discount I now. I didn't know you could do that, that you could take one 
take that to use that for stock money. That's really cool. Well, yeah, anything you have, any retirement plan, 401k, 403b, IRA, Roth, anything you have that's set up for your retirement, you put it on the E-Trade or wherever you put it, it sits in your that account, and then you have to use it to buy something with it. I have a lot that's just sitting in the account, not nothing's bought. It's just kind of the money's just hanging out. So, <laughs> yes, going to look for something fun to buy because everything's at a discount now. It's like a free-for-all. It sure is. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a, uh, I think actually an exciting time. I think there's a lot of change. Change is change, right? It's always happening. And uh, there's definitely, you can have two attitudes about that, right? <laughs> Resistance yes. or acceptance. And uh, I love that you're totally adapting to everything that's going on, thriving, mm -hmm. in fact, that's awesome. You have to, and it's hard. Change is very hard. And it's very scary when your net worth plummets. <laughs> as it happens to many, many people. And it's scary, but you're right. Change is inevitable. And you either freak out or you see it as an opportunity. And that's what I'm choosing to do. Love it. I love that. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for hopping on here and catching up. And oh my gosh, congrats on the book and on your awesome you. roles and the voiceover. It's so exciting. And um thank you, thank you for excited. having me trina i'm excited to come work with you again when all this happens we'll we'll do some I, more magic i can't wait i'm so like counting counting the i wish i was counting the minutes i don't know how many more minutes of this we right have. we don't yeah. know they, i think i'm in california we're now we're staying until may 15th but um mm -hmm. we're all expecting to be much longer than that yeah so, it down be strong yeah. we're all in it together yeah Accurate. All right. Well, thank you so much. You got Thanks it. You. Bye, Take guys.